Welcome to a presentation from Gazelle on how to value your piano service business. Let's get started. Valuing a piano service business is an important part of running a book of business. It's especially important towards the end of your career if you are planning to retire or sell your business within the next five to ten years. It's also important if you're planning on buying an existing business, if you're on the other side of the equation, because you need to know whether or not you're paying a fair price. And lastly, it is important for annual financial planning because if you track the value of your business on your balance sheet, it is going to be an important part of your decision-making process throughout the year. So let's get started. The value of any business, and specifically we're going to focus on piano service businesses because that's our trade, is going to be a combination of your brand value, any assets that you have, the profit margin of your business, the five-year forecast of what we think your business will do in the next five years, and something called CACTL, or the Client Acquisition Cost Ratio to the total lifetime value. We're going to cover that a little bit later. Let's start first with brand value. The question that naturally arises is, do you have a brand or are you the brand? So many of us are small time mom and pop one man shows. And this is a valid question to ask. Because what happens if you don't show up to work tomorrow? Right. If you answer this with, well, revenue doesn't come in and the business falls apart, well, you are the brand of your business. And additionally, what happens if you decide that you're going to hire somebody and send them in your place tomorrow? Are your clients going to complain and revolt or are they simply going to thank whoever shows up and give you a good review? Right. If your clients are going to complain that you didn't come out, Again, you are the brand of your business. This is important because most of us, you are the brand if you're a one-man show. And for most of us, we are going to be looking to buy your business, and that's going to affect our valuation, as well as the transition of how we go about buying your business. So let's talk about a few things that you can do because your ability to transfer brand loyalty is critical to assigning a value to your brand. So writing a letter the day you retire, I'm sorry, but that's just not going to be enough to successfully transfer the brand loyalty that you have with your clients. Uh, you do need to get organized and you do need to start transition planning probably two to five years in advance if you want to capitalize on any brand value that you have. And lastly, you probably need to plan to stay engaged at least six to 12 months after the transition or through a soft transition to help everything go off well. The more you are able to put into the sale of your business, the more you are going to get out of it. Well, what if I do have a brand, right? Maybe your business name isn't John Smith Piano Technician, right? Maybe you actually have a business and it's not just you. Well, a couple of questions come to mind for you. First, do you have a trademark on your business? How original is the name? Do people review your company name? or just you when they leave an online review. I have one friend who owns a piano service company, and the name of the company has nothing to do with who he is as a person, but because he is a one-man show, he regularly gets online reviews specifically saying, John is a great piano technician. They don't actually ever mention his company name. And so that would be a case where technically he has a brand, but he is still the brand of his company. You know, do people talk about your story or your company's story? This is an important piece to having a brand. So if people are talking about your company's story and they're identifying with your company, then absolutely you have a brand and we'll talk about how to value that. Do you have a great website, logo, and marketing framework? 
Notice this is not at the top of the list. A website logo and marketing framework is not a brand, but it is an important piece of having a brand. So if you have that in place, then more than likely you do have a brand. And lastly, could I assume your brand tomorrow without anybody knowing? So if I were to buy your business and just step into your shoes tomorrow, would anybody know? You know, it's actually really difficult to answer all of these questions definitively, uh, but as you start to try to answer them, I think you're going to get a feel for whether or not you have a brand or whether you are the brand of your business. If you do indeed have a brand, great, name your price. I mean, this is going to be a huge asset to you and a huge selling point to you because you'll be able to tell whoever's considering buying your business that, you know what, um, you're not going to be able to just open up shop and wait for me to retire and expect to collect all these clients, right? They are expecting and waiting on me to assign uh, somebody to them, and they're going to identify with the brand and whoever owns this brand. All right, well, let's move on because, you know, tracking your brand value is an intangible asset on your company's balance sheet. Whether you have a brand or you are the brand is an important thing to do, especially if you're planning on selling in a few years. If you can show that you've been tracking what you believe to be your brand value over time, it's actually going to help the sale of your company. Now, this doesn't have to be fancy, but it does have to be intentional. All right, let's move on to assets. These are a little more straightforward, right? So tools, what's the value of any tools that you're going to be transitioning to the new owner? Uh, do you have a car? Is it wrapped? Is it in the company name? Are you going to be selling it? Uh, anything that I can touch is technically an asset, and it's easy to value these things, especially on the used market, right? You can take the price you paid for it and depreciate it over a few years and come up with a value of whatever it is. Um, but another one is service contracts. And the one place that you really have to be careful is, let's say that you have a university contract. You need to look at those contracts closely to see if there are sale clauses in there, because a lot of times the contract will be null and void if you sell the company. Uh, so don't just assume that you have a service contract with a, um, a university or an institution that it will transfer. That being said, there is a lot of goodwill there that you can transfer, and that's a different topic. So it's just not going to fall under the asset category. You know, so assets are things that you can touch and easily assign a value to. Now, let's talk about profit margin. Uh, this is probably the most important aspect of buying a business. Uh, revenue is meaningless if you don't have profit. Uh, I would rather buy a $75,000 a year business with a 10% profit margin than a $1 million revenue business with a 0% profit margin or even a loss. Right, Every single day out of the week, cash is king. And if your business is not generating excess cash and throwing off excess cash, it's not profitable. And so this is going to be an important piece to value. Uh, because when you're looking at what the value, the profit value is of a business, usually you're going to go back somewhere between three and five years. And let's just say your business is throwing off $10,000 of excess cash a year. Right, you could make an argument that your business's profit margin alone is worth thirty to fifty thousand um, dollars. A couple rules of thumb here: if you're going to ask me to wait ten years to recoup whatever uh, investment I put in your business, that's too long. I'm never going to do that deal, and nor would any reasonable buyer take that deal. Um, usually three years is a sweet spot. If you're going to give me three years of a buyback, that's worth it. If you're going to give me three to five years, there's probably something else at play um, that's really pushing the value up. If you're going to give me one year buyback, I'm in. I'm in today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign as quick as I can get you to sign. You know, so usually what we're doing is shooting for some kind of a three to five year profit assessment. Now, another thing to consider, though, is if I am going to need to hire someone to assume all this work, your business is only worth the profit that I can keep after everybody is paid, 
right? Maybe I'm already a semi-successful technician and I'm not going to be able to take on all this extra work unless I hire somebody. Uh, or maybe that's my entire intent. Uh, that being said, it is possible that I don't have enough work, right? If I'm going to be doing all the work and my schedule is empty and I want to buy your business, you actually need to consider whether you want me to buy your business. Uh, because even though I might be willing to pay a premium, I also might not be the person you want to entrust your clientele to. And so you need to consider that. But if I'm an established technician who maybe just moved to the area and rather than starting my own business, I'm looking to buy your, yours because you're retiring, right? that's a great scenario right there because I'm going to be willing to pay a premium uh, and you know I am really am hungry for a lot of work. All right, let's talk about the five-year forecast. What do I believe as the buyer your business is going to do for me over the next five years? This is a critical question, uh, and it is important to note that this has absolutely nothing to do with what you think it will do for me, uh, because what I believe your business will do over the next five years is all that matters. Uh, if I look at your business and see low profit, disorganization, personal identity branding, meaning you are the entire brand, and a large client base then the value is really only what I can make of it over the next five years, not what you have built. Um, on the other hand, uh, if I look at your business and I see that it's well organized, there's a good profit margin, that there's more than just personal identity branding, there's actually some semblance of a brand, uh, then the value of what I can make of it is going to be much, much higher, and I'm going to be willing to pay more of a premium for that business. All right, lastly, let's move on to the cap, uh, client acquisition cost and total lifetime value. This is a really important topic, and it's a complex topic that we'll probably cover more in a different video, but I'm going to cover the highlights here. Uh, total lifetime value is how long do your customers stay with you and how many times do they order your services again and again and again. Let's say that you know your client on average is going to pay you $500 a year and they have a 10-year lifespan before they stop servicing their piano. Right? The total lifetime value of a single client here is $5,000. Well, the question is, I'm going to be losing clients all the time as they age out. So what are my client acquisition costs, aka marketing, website maintenance, uh, referral fees, and anything that I'm going to have to pay uh, in order to attract new clients to this business to replace the ones that die or move out of my business? Uh, so what you want is you want to look for a ratio where the total lifetime value of the client is around three times the client acquisition cost. If your captive radio uh, ratio, not radio, is too high, it actually means that you have underutilized your business potential. Now, this might look good because you're sitting there saying like, look, I don't have to spend a lot of money to get a lot of customers. Uh, and this is a good thing for the buyer. But it also means that there are a lot of unknowns in your business and they are going to have to spend way more on advertising than you currently are if they're going to maximize the investment of this asset, of this client base. Otherwise, the client base will rot and atrophy. And before they're able to capitalize on it, those clients will age out. And so if you don't want that ratio to be too high, but you also don't want it to be too low. Because if it is too low, then you are probably asking too much for your business. And you will need to reduce the price to attract a buyer. Um, as you can tell, being organized and being able to record these things is important, which is why there's usually a two to five year lead up time to any kind of business transition. Uh, you want to be able to look at all, you know, print off all of your invoices from the last year and print off all your invoices from the last five to 10 years and look at how long clients stick with you. Figure out what that total lifetime value is and then print off your expenses and look at how much you spent on marketing over the last year or over that same time span. 
and come up with what that ratio is. Now, once you have a brand value assessment, an assessment on any assets that you have, an assessment on your profit margin, a five-year forecast of what you hope the business or think the business could do in five years and what your buyer thinks the business could do in five years, and a good solid handle on what your client acquisition costs are as a ratio of the total lifetime value. This is where you are going to come together and assign a number to each of these five groups and say, this is what each part of my business is worth. As a general rule, the more organized you are and the more you're able to show what each of these are, the higher the value of your business will be. Now, Gazelle fits into this because we are a software that helps you build a brand that you can sell. There's a lot of ways that we do this. One is just an organization. Another is a very simple thing, but it helps your customers identify with something or someone other than you. When you are the brand, just having your customers used to scheduling online and not talking to you helps to transition you from you being the brand to your company being the brand. There's a lot of other things I can say here, uh, but Gazelle is really a software that's going to help you save time and wow your customers so you can play more music. Or in this case, spend a couple of years focusing on building the value of your business before you're ready to sell it. If you have any questions on selling a business or valuing a business, feel free to reach out to us at support at gazelleapp.io.